Good afternoon, everybody. You are about to watch the Palai Bible Church program, the moment of transformation. Today, by the grace of the Lord, we shall listen to our pastor, General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoyi. We are going to be blessed. It is my wish that you call your family to come and listen to you, as our pastor is blessing you with his holiness message. Amen. Bless. We're looking at Numbers chapter 23 from verse 19. Numbers 23, we're reading from verse 19. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? Or as he spoken, and shall he not bring it to pass? Shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. You are blessed. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Balaam said, God has blessed the people of God. And even Balaam, with all his sussay, all his power, all his sorcery, whatever he had, he confessed he could not reverse it. And Balaam is stronger than any enemy that is living today. If he could not reverse it, no enemy will reverse your blessing in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. Is the Lord with you over there? In your house, is the Lord with you there? In your place of work, is the Lord there? When all those people are near about you, is the Lord near about you there? The Lord is God is with him. And it says, the shout of a king is among them. God has brought them out of Egypt. Let me read that again. God has brought me out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Surely there is no enchantment against you. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Neither is there any divination against you. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob, of you, of me, of Israel, and of the church, what has God brought? I want to talk on something special this morning. I'm talking on both Israel and the church. The church and Israel. Israel and the church. The topic is the dominion of Israel and the church. The dominion of Israel and the church. Many people might not have noticed in the New Testament in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 that we the church, we are the Israel of God today. The Israel of God. And what God planned for Israel, he has planned for the church. What God did for Israel, he's doing for the church. And we need to have our eyes open to what the Lord is saying. Galatians chapter 6, I read from verse 14 all through to verse 16. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross, of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them. And mercy and upon, upon who? The Israel of God. That's the church right there, the Israel of God. And if you look back to the Old Testament and you see what God did for Israel, then you can uh, say that's what God is going to do for the Israel of God today, for the church today. He gave them dominion then, he's giving us dominion today. He gave them victory then, he's giving us victory today. He gave them power then, he's giving us power today. He gave them abundant provision 
They drank water out of the rock and they ate angels' food. And he's giving us the same provision today. The, the people of God is giving us this provision. You are not lack in Jesus' name. I told you we are talking on dominion, the dominion of Israel and the church. In Judges chapter 5, Judges chapter 5, here is the song of Israel that the leader at that time sang together with them. And it tells us what kind of victory we have, what dominion we have, what, what triumph we have. Judges chapter 5, verse 13. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. I think we're going to read this together. It says in verse 13, once you go, then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. That last part again, the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. That last part again. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. What's the topic today? The dominion of Israel and the church. There are three things we're looking at concerning Israel, concerning the church. Number one, our departure from Egypt. Our departure from Egypt. Very significant that you know that the Lord called the children of Israel. And the Lord called the church. Actually, the word church is ecclesia. The called out people. As he called them out of Egypt, he's also calling us. He has called us already out of Egypt. Number one, our departure from Egypt. Number two, our deliverance from Egypt. All their magicians there, all their powers there, all the darkness there, all the idol worshiping there, all the oppression there were delivered. I'm delivered already. I said I'm delivered already. And there wasn't any part of the children of Israel that remained in Egypt. In fact, Moses said, not a hoof are we going to leave behind. And when the Lord delivered you out of Egypt, your body, your soul, your spirit, your wife, your husband, your children, your family, your business, everything belonging to you is out of Egypt. I thought you'll say amen to that. Yeah. Our deliverance from Egypt. Thank God it has happened. Number three, our dominion over Egypt. Our dominion over Egypt. Number one, our departure from Egypt. Do you remember? It was a glorious night that Israel was delivered out of Egypt. Do you remember? It was a glorious day when you, by the grace of God, by the calling of the Lord, by the mercy of God, by the compassion of the Lord, by the salvation of the Lord, glorious day when you were delivered out of Egypt. Egypt. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I read from verse 12 and verse 13. It says in verse 12, it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token that means for a sign that means for a, uh, for a for a significant symbol then it says upon the houses where ye are for and when i see the blood i will pass over you when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt the land of Egypt experienced the judgment of God because they were sinners or repentant sinners, hard-hearted sinners, rebellious sinners. And the sinners that challenged God, who is that God that I should let you go? And because of that rebellion in sin, the Lord brought judgment on them. But then he told the children of Israel, he said, you're still in the land of Egypt. There's only one thing that can save you and deliver you and protect you. That is kill the lamb, apply the blood upon the lintels of the houses and when I see the blood I will pass over you. The church now already is covered by the blood of the lamb. 
Because when John saw Jesus coming the following day, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world also took away your sickness. Also took away the evil spirit. Also took away all the sorcery. Also took away all the paths of darkness. At the same time, when Jesus said, It is finished. All your heart aches and troubles and afflictions and sin and judgment and condemnation, everything was finished. I said everything was finished. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, as he's delivering your house today. He's delivering your household today. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Verse 42. In verse 42, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for, the bring, for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Our departure out of the land of Egypt. He brought them out. He brought them out. He's bringing you out. He has brought you out already. And you'll never go back to Egypt in Jesus' name. He said in bringing them out of the land of Egypt that this is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Chapter 36, reading from verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. They always remembered we came out of Egypt. Always remember, you came out of Egypt, and when they came out of Egypt, Pharaoh had no power over them anymore. The magicians of Egypt had no power over them anymore. All the paths of darkness, idolatry, the gods of Egypt had no power over them anymore. Remember, the moment you came out of Egypt, the Lord brought you out. He saved you. You repented of your sin. You are, you are born in the Lord. And since that time, all the magicians of Egypt and the paths of Egypt and the paths of darkness, they will never have power over you anymore in Jesus' name. In Ezekiel chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 24. In verse 24 it says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. The land of promise is your own land. The land of Canaan is your own land. The land of protection, the land of peace, the land of plenty, that is your land. The Lord has brought you out already in Jesus' name. Look at, look at the signification. Look at the significance of that. And look at, you know, how that came about in verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. Anybody clean over there? And then it says, from all your eye, from all your filthiness, and from your, all your idols will I cleanse you. That's salvation right there. The moment you were saved, you were born again, and then the Lord cleansed you. He said, except a man be born of water. That's the water of the word and of the spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God. And that moment when the word of God, like water, washed you and cleansed you, and the blood of Jesus cleansed your soul, you were saved, and you were brought out of Egypt. Look at verse 26. In new heart also will I give you, and in new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And then it says, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That is sanctification there. It takes the Adamic nature away. The inward depravity, that it takes away. The original sin, that it takes away. And it breaks the power of cancelled sin. And it says, because it brings you out of Egypt. Any remembrance of Egypt, any kind of thing belonging to Egypt, all that is taken away from you in Jesus' name. If anybody had any stony heart, Pharaoh had a stony heart. If anybody had a hardened heart, Pharaoh had a hardened heart. If anybody had a kind, this kind of heart that will never yield to God, Pharaoh had that. And all those Egyptians, many of them had that too. And the Lord said, I'm going to so separate you from Egypt that all the uncleanness of Egypt, all the filthiness of Egypt, even the hard-heartedness of Egypt will not be upon you again in Jesus' name. Salvation, thank God I'm saved. Sanctification, thank God I'm sanctified. Look at, verse, look at verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. You know, Jesus said, 
the Spirit has been upon you, but the Spirit will not be within you. This is Holy Ghost baptism. Verse 25, salvation. Verse 26, sanctification. Verse 27, what's verse 27? Holy Ghost baptism. And I will put my Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. The blessings of God will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. He brought us out. We're going to keep away and keep out of Egypt in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Remember once again, we're talking about Israel and the church. God brought Israel out of the out of the land of Egypt. It will be unthinkable, unthinkable, impracticable. There was no way any of the children of Israel could have gotten married to an Egyptian and say, you know, I want to go back. How is he going to go back? A Red Sea already divided the children of Israel from the Egyptians. And all the, all the Pharaoh and the magicians and the chariots and all those people, they were drowned in the sea. And when they were drowned, the sea came back and then continued to, it was very deep and very wide. And the children of Israel were on this side and the Egyptians were on this side. And the Lord separated them completely from magicians from all the sorcerers, from all the divination of Egypt, and from all the power of Egypt, and from all the ladies, all the women of Egypt, and all the men of Egypt, that there was no connection anymore. And that's what the Lord is saying. He has separated you from Egypt. There's no connection anymore in Jesus' name. There was no way that any of the children of Israel could go back to the Egyptians and, and become business partners with those Egyptians. Impossible because a river separated them. And it's the same thing with the church today that the church, the people of God, will not go back to Egypt and go back to the world and make marriages with them and then have business with them, join affinity with them. That's why it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together without believers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness. There is a fixed God between righteousness and unrighteousness. We cannot cross over. And what communion has the light with darkness? There is a wide gap, a wide distance between light and darkness, and we cannot the light will not marry in the dark, will not marry darkness, will not marry the children of darkness. And then it says in verse 15, and what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has seen the believeth with an infidel? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temples of the living God. Is that right? Ye are the temples of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them. And I will walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Verse 17. Everybody read this. One, two, three. Go. It says because of what the Lord has done. Because he separated us from Egypt. Because he took us out of Egypt. Because there is a departure from Egypt. Wherefore, come out. From among them and be separate. That means we don't eat what they eat. We don't drink what they drink. We don't smoke what they smoke. We don't wear what they wear. We don't have the culture that they have. We don't have the pattern. We don't have the pollution. We don't have the filthiness that they have. We don't have the style that they have. We don't have the kind of marriage that they do. We don't live the life, of the lifestyle of those people. It says, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Let's not say deeper life. Says who? Says the Lord. You know, some people, they will say, well, because of deeper life, I cannot do this. I don't know about that. Because of deeper life, I cannot drink this. I don't know about that one. Because of deeper life, I cannot have this cocaine and this other thing, my ritual. I don't know about that. Because of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the the unclean thing. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's going beyond where not the unclean thing. How can, how can you wear it when you don't even touch it? Drink not the unclean thing. How can you drink it when you cannot even hold it in your hand? And then it doesn't say eat not the unclean thing. How can you eat it when you cannot even touch it? It doesn't say embrace not the unclean thing. How can you embrace when you cannot even touch? It says touch not the unclean thing. 
Let there be a wide gap, a long distance between you and the unclean thing. So wide a gap that if they try to stretch their hand, it cannot reach you. I said it cannot reach you. But you know the people who are living on the borderline of Egypt and Israel. The people who are living in the borderline at the periphery of uh, the church and, uh, and, 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 the, and the world. They are so near the world. They are so near Egypt that a little stretch of a hand like this is touching them. You know, many people, they say this one is troubling them, that one is troubling. If you are far away from them, far away from them, and you are separate from them, they will never be able to touch you in Jesus' name. But if you are attending parties together, if you are socializing together, if you are, you know, dressing the same way together, if you are going to the same parties, the same birthday party ceremony, and all that with them, of course, you are so near. They, they stretch out their, their hand like this, and they are touching you already. From this time, I cut off their hand from their life in Jesus' name. Because it says, wherefore, because of this, come out. From among them and be ye separate. You know, sometimes, even sometimes physically, it is necessary that you know you are living in a particular place, and the brother is saying, well, I, have a, I have accommodation here. No, I can't I don't want to live with a deeper life. You don't want to live with deeper life. Who do you want to live with? Shallow life? Terrible life. I want to live with you know the people that will say, Come, come over here, come and live here. I have a room for you, I have a house for you here. Brother. In our apartment, there's a vacancy, and you can come and rent a place there. And then say, who are the people there? Well, on my right is, you know, a deeper life, a group, a pastor. On my other left is a group, deeper life, a district pastor. And then the other apartment above, we have, you know, a prayer warrior there. And then there's this place that is open. I say, uh -huh, give it to another person. I don't want to come. You know, deeper life on the right and deeper life on the left. Sunday, deeper life. Monday, deeper life. And then all the days, again, deeper life. Give it to another person. Help me look for another accommodation. Where you have all those other people. If they want to live near Sodom, and Sodom will swallow them up. They want to live near Egypt, and Egypt will swallow them up. Myself, I've taken my tent away from Egypt. I've taken my tent away from Sodom. Where you find deeper life, come and tell me that's where I want to stay. I want deeper life on the right and deeper life on the left and deeper life behind and deeper life in the front and deeper life in the story behind over there. And then when in the morning I hear prayer there, prayer there, I wake up, deeper life is praying and there is no power of darkness that can come near that place in Jesus' name. That's why it says, come out, come out, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And then he says, and I will, I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Give me a good amen there. The Lord has delivered you from bondage. You'll never go back to that bondage in Jesus' name. In Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 4. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil world. That's the departure from Egypt. Israel is gone out of Egypt. The church has gone out of the world because it says he has delivered us. He has delivered us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. This deliverance will be permanent in Jesus' name. We have we, we, we departed from that place and we're not going to go back to that place again. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 26. James chapter 1. We're looking at verse 26 as well as verse 27. It tells us in verse 26, it says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bright left not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. You know, there are some people that think that, you know, deeper life is just all doctrine. I believe in the Bible. I believe, uh, you know, in the Holy Ghost. I believe in salvation. I believe in repentance. I believe water baptism. I believe um, you know, the Lord's Supper. I believe one man, one uh, wife. I believe evangelism. I believe Jesus is coming again. I believe there's a, I believe there's a heaven. Who am I? I'm deeper life. No, not at all. That's not deeper life. Deeper life is practical. Deeper life, is, it affects your life, affects your tongue, affects your conversation, affects your thoughts, affects your, your very lifestyle. It says if anybody seems to be religious and he controls not his tongue, the people that talk, 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 
and they talk rubbish and they talk nonsense. They are deeper life in appearance, but they are not deeper life in their talking, in their tongue. The way they talk, they talk like Egyptians. They talk like the Sodomites. They talk like the Assyrians. They talk in the language of the people of the world. It says that if we have been called out of the world and we have departed from Egypt, the language of Egypt, everything is gone. The proverbs of Egypt, all that is gone. And all the interaction, conversation of Egypt, that's the way Egyptians talk. That's the way drunkards talk. That's the way smokers talk. That's the way nightclub people, that's the way they talk. That's the way, you know, all these other people of the world, that's the way they talk. Each profession has its own language. Each religion has its own language. And when you say you are deep alive, your language must be deep. Your trance must be deep. It must bring people out of shallowness into something that is deep. That's deeper life. But the people that never control their tongue, you know, they just talk. And everything is shallow. You cannot even find any meaning in what they are saying. The, the Lord is saying, let's totally come out of Egypt. If Egypt is out of our lives, let us see the evidence that Egypt is totally out. And this morning, I believe, Egypt will be totally out in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. It says, pure religion and on Defiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless in their affliction and to keep himself, tell me, unspotted, unspotted from the world. To keep, uh, to, he says, to keep himself and to keep herself unspotted, undefiled by the world. They will not defile us in Jesus' name. And there's a passage in Micah. I don't know whether you've seen this before. If you've not seen this before, you need to see this. Micah chapter 2. Micah chapter 2. It's uh, near the end of the Old Testament. Micah chapter 2. And we're reading there in verse 10. The departure from Egypt. Our departure from Egypt. He wants us to depart. He wants us to look around you. Am I still tied down in the aprons of Egypt and the chains of Egypt and all these things that surround me? Is there anything of Egyptians in my life surrounding me? And the Lord is saying, depart, depart. This is not your place of rest. Let's look at this in Micah chapter 2. Have you found Micah chapter 2? How many of you have found it? Okay, thank you very much. If there's somebody by your side who has not found Micah chapter 2, uh, show it to them how to get it. It says in Micah chapter 2 verse 10, Arise ye and depart. Arise ye and depart. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. For this is not your rest. Look up here for a moment. I want to, you know, tell you a particular secret now. You see the children of Israel, when temporarily... The Lord allowed them with Jacob to go to Egypt. But that was not the place of their arrest. That was not the final place that God had for them. But the Pharaoh that was there at that time, he made things comfortable for them. They were happy there. They, you know, had the land of Goshen, but it was still part of Egypt. And then eventually, you know, Pharaoh, that Pharaoh died. If the next Pharaoh had been so nice to them, they would have lived forever in Egypt. But the Lord did something. He made the heart of the Pharaoh that came on at that time to be against them. And there was oppression on them. The oppression on them, God knew about it. Then they began to cry out. It was then they realized, ah, ah this is not our place. If everything was easy, everything was uh, comfortable, Everything was happy it was them. They would never have thought of wanting to go out of Egypt. But the Lord so organized and arranged things that things were not easy. Many times in our lives, you know, we're born again. We're children of God. And the place we are, that's not the place we ought to be. If everybody there, if they were loving and caring, accommodating and very nice and you, and you felt at ease, you will stay there forever. So God allows, you know, some things to brush you and to push you and all that. Then you begin to look around. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? That's exactly what the Lord wanted to achieve by allowing all those things. Because if everything was just easy, you'll never think of coming out. That's why now Micah was telling, don't feel at ease in that place. That is not your place of friends. We're coming out of that place. I said we're coming out. And if you have been asking the question, why am I undergoing this in this place, undergoing that in that place, undergoing that in that place, maybe God is telling you that that is not your place of rest. 
you are, you are now relaxing in that place. And the Lord wants you to come out of that place. That's why it's allowing all those things to come upon your life there. Come out and the Lord will bring you to this land flowing with milk and honey in Jesus' name. The rest of your life, when you come out of that place, the rest of your life will be a beautiful life in Jesus' name. Micah chapter 2 verse 10, Arise ye and depart. And then it says, For this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. That's Egypt. Egypt is polluted. It is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. That's why we're departing out of Egypt, and we're not going to go back into that Egypt in Jesus' name. Number one, our departure from Egypt. Are you out already? I said, are you out already? Number, number two now, our deliverance from Egypt. Our deliverance from Egypt. Uh, we, we need to understand this, that the Lord has so made it very clear that we are delivered from Egypt. Because of the importance of this section of the message, I'm going to go one by one and spell it out for you very well. Our deliverance from Egypt. Number one, our deliverance from the king of Egypt. Our deliverance from the king of Egypt. Number two, our deliverance from the affliction of Egypt. Any affliction that has been on the Egyptians, the Lord said when he took us out of Egypt, he took us out of the affliction. And he took that affliction out of us. And the affliction of Egypt will not be upon you in Jesus' name. Before you go, before you leave this, uh, this place uh, today, we're going to take all that affliction of Egypt away from your life. Away from your family. Away from your body. Number three is the deliverance from the gods and idols of Egypt. The gods and the idols of Egypt. You see, those gods, whatever their power, the Lord has given us deliverance from the gods and the idols of Egypt. Number four, deliverance from the army of Egypt. I'll show you in the word of God, the army of Egypt that you know would have run after you and then even when you try to, when the Red Sea is open and then you get into Red Sea, they still want to run after you. It is in that Red Sea, the army of Egypt pursuing you will perish in Jesus' name. Number five, deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. Even the bondage of Egypt, today we are free. I said today you are free. Number six, deliverance from the disease of Egypt. Disease, all the sicknesses of Egypt, all the infirmities of Egypt, and all those pains of Egypt today, they are gone in Jesus' name. Number seven, deliverance from the furnace of Egypt. Very hot, very hot. The furnace of Egypt were delivered in Jesus' name. And number eight, deliverance from the reproach of Egypt. The reproach of Egypt. You know, the reproach of Egypt, you know, when you're over there, uh, where is your God? Well, if you say you have God and if you say you're worshiping God, how is this reproach? How is that reproach? Today, all that reproach is gone. Number nine, deliverance from the kingdom of Egypt. That is, from the dominion of Egypt, all the power of Egypt. Today, they are broken in Jesus' name. Number 10, deliverance from the wisdom of Egypt. You know, Egypt, they use a kind of wisdom, this worldly wisdom, this satanic wisdom. They say, let us deal wisely with them. If we, if we allow the young men, the baby boys to be living, then they'll become strong later. And then they'll match with our enemies. And then they will run away. Let us kill all their baby boys. They couldn't kill them because they couldn't kill Moses. They couldn't kill Aaron. And then all those great men that rose up later, they couldn't kill them. They will not kill you. They will not kill your children. And we're going to overcome all that wisdom of Egypt in Jesus' name. Number 11, deliverance from the spirit of Egypt. The spirit of Egypt. And number 12, the spirit from the way of Egypt. Deliverance from the way of Egypt. Deliverance from the way of Egypt. Number one, deliverance from, tell me, the king of Egypt. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 46. Jeremiah chapter 46. In Jeremiah chapter 46, the Lord tells us that the children of Israel, and remember we're talking about both Israel and the church. The children of Israel, they were delivered from the king of Egypt. Although the king of Egypt was still making a noise, it was empty noise. That noise will not do anything in your life in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 46, we're looking at verse 17, 46, 17. They did cry there, and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is but a noise. 
he has passed the time appointed. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is just a mere noise. He can shout, but he has passed his time. We are no more under him. And you are no more under him in Jesus' name. So when you hear the empty noise of her, don't think that he's powerful. All his teeth, they are knocked out in Jesus' name. All his power, they are impotent in Jesus' name. All his strength, they are paralyzed in Jesus' name. He says all that remains now for the king of Egypt is just a noise because he has passed the appointed time. The time when he was appointed, when he could do anything, all that time now is gone. They don't have any power over you in Jesus' name. Number two, you are delivered from the, number two, affliction of Egypt. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 17. Exodus chapter 3, we're looking at verse 17. It tells us in verse 17, Exodus chapter 3, it says in this verse, And I have, I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt. I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt. Any affliction still there, I command you, go in Jesus' name. Because that's what the Lord has said. If the Lord has said it and the word of the Lord cannot, cannot be contradicted, cannot be reversed. Not even a Pharaoh, a Balaam can reverse that verse, can reverse the words of the Lord. I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt. It is gone in Jesus' name. Number three, from the idols of Egypt. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And we're looking at verse, we're looking at verse 12 and verse 13. 12 and 13. When you know this, it's good to read it again. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Against all the gods of Egypt, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be for you a sign, a symbol, it will be a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19, we're reading from verse 1. All the gods of Egypt, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, it was on the body of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon his sweet cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. The idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So all the idols and all the gods of Egypt and of the village and everything were delivered in Jesus' name. Idols by the sea, idols in the forest, idols in the desert, idols anywhere. They don't have power over the church anymore. Neither do they have any power over you in Jesus' name. Number four, we're delivered from the army of Egypt, from the chariots of Egypt, from the army of Egypt. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 1 all through to verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. And it says, and know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord, your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretch out arm, and his miracles, and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. Look at verse 4 now, for what and what he did unto the army of Egypt. What he did unto the army of Egypt. What he did unto the army of Egypt. What did he do to the army of Egypt? He drowned the army of Egypt in the Red Sea. That they had no power over the children of Israel anymore. And the army of uh, all the paths of darkness in this world, they cannot touch you anymore in Jesus' name. And he says, see what he did to the army of Egypt unto their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them 
as they pursued after you and how the Lord has destroyed them, not only at that time, unto, unto, I said unto, they are all destroyed in Jesus' name. Number five, from the bondage of Egypt, from the bondage of Egypt, from the bondage of Egypt, deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. It says in Leviticus chapter 26, Leviticus chapter 26, we're looking at verse 13. Leviticus 26, verse 13, I am the Lord, your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. You'll not be in bondage anymore. You will not be the abundant men, and I have broken the bands of your yoke. Do you have any yoke left? They are destroyed in Jesus' name. And made you go upright, and made you go free. Number six, were delivered from the diseases of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're reading from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee. What? And the Lord will take away from thee some sicknesses, the little sicknesses, most of your sicknesses. How many sicknesses? All. Oh, should we still have sickness upon us? Of course, no. No, you will not have them upon you in Jesus' name. And the Lord, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt. There you are. The evil diseases of Egypt. The evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Number seven, were delivered from the furnace of Egypt. Of the furnace of Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Reading from verse 20. It says in verse 20, But the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace. He has brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day, as you look at what the Lord has done for the children of Israel, anything connected with Egypt, call it the king of Egypt, call it the affliction of Egypt, or the gods, or the idols of Egypt, or the army and the chariots of Egypt, or the bondage of Egypt, or disease of Egypt, or even the furnace of Egypt, the Lord has taken everything away. And if you are the Israel of God, the people of God, the Christians, the church of the living God, the called out people, the ecclesia, the redeemed of the Lord, those who are purchased by the blood of the Lamb, all those things are taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And it means you are free, and free indeed. And that's what Jesus said, that if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That means 100% free. Free in your head and free in your mind. Free in your body and free in your soul. And free in your spirit and free in your heart. And free in your house and free in your office. And free in the church and free everywhere. Because all those bondages of Egypt, everything is cancelled and destroyed away from your life in Jesus' name. Number eight, he has delivered you from the reproach. The reproach and the reproaches of Egypt. We're looking at Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 9. Joshua chapter 5 and I'm reading here from verse 9. In verse 9 it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. This day. Everybody say, This day. Look at your day today. What a day the Lord has taken away from you. All the reproach of Egypt in Jesus' name. The reproach of barrenness is taken away. And the reproach of leprosy is taken away. The reproach of where is your God? The reproach of poverty. That is taken away in Jesus' name. You know, they, you, you are coming to us now. You want to borrow from us. I thought you said you have gone with Christ. You've gone to deeper life. You've gone to church. Okay, if you want to get money from us, and uh, you know you are poor and we are rich, you are going to be richer than them all. Because all the reproach of Egypt is gone in Jesus' name. You will not borrow from the world. 
you will not beg the people of the world to feed you because the Lord will provide for all your needs in Jesus' name. What a verse, what a verse, what a verse is this that the Lord said unto Joshua and is saying unto the church of the living God, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt of you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Number nine, well, we're also delivered from the kingdom, that means from the dominion of Egypt. We're looking at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 18. 1 Samuel chapter 10, we're looking at verse 18. And, he, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up, Israel. I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppressed you. The kingdom of darkness will not oppress you anymore because we're delivered out of the kingdom or dominion of Egypt. Now, there's the wisdom of Egypt, or the wisdom of Egypt. The people of this world, they are wise in their generations. They are wise in their wickedness. They are wise in their oppression. They are wise in their evil. They, they are wise and methodical in how they try to bring you under. You will not come under any Egyptian. An Egyptian will not be your lord. An Egyptian will not be your king. An Egyptian will not be your authority in Jesus' name. You know, if you don't know how to do it, they try to do it this way. They give you a gift to enslave you. They give you a kind of thing to enslave you and to bring you under. You will not come under an Egyptian in Jesus' name. You know, they try to uh, later the eating be ditch you. They make you afraid. So that, you know, if you want, they say, where are you going? Where are you going? And then they say, I'm going to church. They say, which church? They say, uh, you can go to this kind of church. They will show you a church where there's no Bible, where there's no doctrine, where there's no power, where there's no authority. They say, you can go to that one. If you say, no, I want to go to deeper life. It is even you. The way you mentioned deeper life, they know that your own deeper life is small d and small e and small e and small p and small e and small and small p and small r and then small l and small i and small f and small e deeper life. But me, I don't go to deeper life. Where do I go? Deeper life. Deeper life with a capital D. I said capital D. When I tell the people, I oh, they say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Of course, they must be sorry. I said they will be sorry. They will leave you alone in Jesus' name. You will not come under the wisdom of Egypt in Jesus' name. God has given us a kind of wisdom that is greater than the wisdom of any Egyptian anywhere. We will control them. They will not control us. I want you to look at 1 Kings. We're looking at 1 Kings. Chapter 4. 1 Kings chapter 4. And I'm reading here from verse 30. 1 Kings chapter 4. Verse 30. And you'll see that he has delivered us from all those, uh, you know, mach machinations and all those manipulations and all those principles and all those orchestration of the people of Egypt. We are free and we're free indeed and free forever in Jesus' name. You know, the children of Egypt, they, they try to use that kind of wisdom. They'll keep them in bondage forever. Bondage forever. A kind of wisdom that will keep you in bondage will not be upon your life again in Jesus' name. Look at this. It's 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the wisdom of the East country and all the wisdom of all the wisdom of Egypt. What's the wisdom of Egypt? Let me show you. Let me show you. It's uh, Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, the, the wisdom of Egypt, that the Lord has delivered you, delivered us, delivered the church from. Exodus chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Wisdom of Egypt, let us deal wisely with them. I pray this day all that wisdom of Egypt is totally knocked out and destroyed out of your life in Jesus' name. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any wall, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them out of the land. 
And the reason why they are trying to use that wisdom of Egypt is so that you will never get out of their midst. You know, they'll keep you under every time we say never. We say, God forbid that Egypt will not keep you under for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. That's why they're trying to use that kind of wisdom. But thank God I am free. I say, thank God I am free. And thank God our church is free. Number 11 is the spirit of Egypt. We're looking at, uh, at uh, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 19, we're looking at verse 2. It says, we're delivered also from the spirit of Egypt, from the spirit of Egypt. We're looking at chapter 19, verse 2. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Instead of fighting me, they'll be fighting themselves. Instead of fighting you, they'll be fighting themselves. And, then, and they shall fight everyone against his brother. Fighting belongs to them, but peace belongs to us. And everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail. The spirit of Egypt shall fail. The spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that are familiar spirit, and to the winds, and the Egyptians will I give over unto the hand of a cruel lord. The Egyptians, all those Egyptians that are trying to seek through their evil spirit, evil power, I give them to the hands of a cruel lord. And a fierce king shall rule over them, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And now number 12, we're delivered from the way of Egypt. We're delivered from the way of Egypt. The way of Egypt, the practice of Egypt, the lifestyle of Egypt will not be upon our lives anymore in Jesus' name. The way Egyptians get married, you'll not get married that way. And the way Egyptians bury their dead, you'll not bury your dead that way. The way Egyptians have their naming ceremony, you'll not have your naming ceremony that way. The way Egyptians worship their idols, you'll not worship our God that way. And the way Egyptians dress, you'll not dress like that in Jesus' name. The way Egyptians throw their parties, you'll not throw your parties like that in Jesus' name. And the way Egyptians try to interact and try to befriend this and that, you will not do that in Jesus' name. The way Egyptians raise up idols out of a river Nile and out of this river, out of that river, that will not be upon your life in Jesus' name. The way Egyptians depend upon magicians and sorcerers, anytime they have any dream, anytime they have any kind of a problem they cannot solve, they call for the magician, they call for the sorcerers, that way will not be in your life in Jesus' name. When somebody looks at you like this, they will know that this is not an Egyptian. This is an Israel of God, and that symbol and that victory of the Israel of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 2, reading from verse 6. It says, neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up, that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? that led us through the wilderness and through a land of deserts and of pits and through a land of droughts and of the shadow of death and through a land that no man passes through and where no man dwells. He's saying that the children of Israel, they pass through the land where nobody ever passed through. Before they passed through, they will die. But the children of Israel, they passed through and they came on the other side to the land flowing with milk and honey. We are on a journey. And by the time I get to that other side, it will be the land of Canaan. I said it will be the land of Canaan. And you are going to live in that land of Canaan in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. And I brought you uh, and I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit whereof, uh, fruit thereof, and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. For that children, for those children of Israel, the first covenant, they broke it. But we we're not going to break God's covenant in Jesus' name. In verse 11, as a nation change their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people, that those other people, children of Israel, they have changed their glory for that which does not profit. The reason why the children of Israel could not continue 
in the dominion, in the deliverance, in the protection of the Lord, is that they change their glory into that which is not glory. And the reason why some people, they say their deeper life, where the victory of those good old days and the power of those good old days and the triumph of those good old and the protection of those good old days, the reason they don't have it now is because they're changing the doctrine little by little. They're changing the pattern of life, deeper life, little by little. And they change their glory for that which is not glory. All those changes we're going to abandon. We're going to get back to the original deeper life in Jesus' name original deeper life you know the people that are living around you if they're evil people they will say that your prayer is fire upon them that's deeper life and that same fire of deeper life will come once again in jesus name the lord has started already i said the lord has started already uh, were you at the dlcc last uh, week uh, saturday were you there how many of you were there oh wonderful wonderful where are you are those hands, are they still anointed? Yes. What anointed hands at me now? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You know, it was not only at the DLCC, because the power has now come back. I mean, deeper life with a capital D. What kind of deeper life? Capital has now come back. You know, in Bielsa, there was a man that had, was, had been mental, mad for 10 years, and the changed their hands together as they were praying at the, you know, at the DLCC and then the Lord moved that way and we transmitted that same power. I'm telling you, there's transmission. I said there's transmission. And we transmitted that same power over there. You know, the father brought the child and that, uh, for, you know, the mad person just said, my daddy, look at this chain. Remove this chain now. And they removed the chain and that young man Free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Another man in another place that same Saturday. I'm saying that all this bondage of Egypt, even at a distance, even when we are not there. Aye, but when you are there with me now, face to face, eyeball to eyeball. If those who are far away, if they are being totally delivered, those of us who are here, I say congratulations for you. You are delivered in Jesus' name. This man I'm talking about, he has never stepped into any church in his life. All he knew was juju. Only juju that he knew. If he wanted to go out like this, he'll fill his pocket. That thing was there. If he wanted anywhere, that thing was there. And then for the first, I'd never attended any retreat, any deeper life retreat, any retreat conference anywhere in the world. And then somebody got him to come there and he got to their retreat location. That Saturday night, as the power of God being sent forth like this, that power struck him down. And then all this juju, all this juju. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the whole world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, we will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, if we tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.